Hello again. In this video I will be showing you the best way to replace a broken tile and any damage you may find to the timber laths underneath. Here using a hammer for scale you can see the size of the break involved. These tiles are redland stone walls which for their many faults are actually quite a strong tile. So let's take a closer look. As it happens it's very rare for this type of tile to be nailed because most tile manufacturers do not make this style of tile with a nail hole. If however your tiles are nailed, to gain access to the roof you will have to find a row that isn't by jabbing the bottom edge of the tiles with the rubber handle of a hammer until that row pops up. This will then allow you to lever out the nailed row. Traditionally, every third row of a tiled roof would be nailed if holes are present in the tiles that is. This is considered good practice and allows easier replacement of any breakages to the roof should that be required. Here's a closer look at the break itself. Normally by looking at the colour of the broken edge you can determine the age of the damage. As you can see it's not a fresh break because of the dirt build up and the litching growing on it. So I'll put this at more than three years and certainly by looking at the rot level of the wooden lath and the hole in the felt underneath you can see this has taken quite a while to happen. Obviously the lath and the hole in the felt are going to need to be replaced. By feeling the felt with your fingers you can determine the edges of the rafters underneath. This will allow you to mark the middle of the rafters onto the laths for cutting in this position. If we imagine just for a second you had x-ray eyes this is what you would see. Cut the lath using just the top 75 millimeters or 3 inches of the saw where the lath is no longer rotten and in the middle of the joist underneath. When cut do exactly the same thing to the other side. Now using the hammer lever against the rafter underneath and the lath taking care not to damage the felt any further. Here I've pinned back the overlapping felt after cutting it up the rafter with a Stanley knife to show you more clearly the rafters underneath. Run a Stanley knife, preferably with a hooked blade, down the inside of each rafter and then horizontally across to remove the damaged section of felt. We can use this as a template to cut the replacement felt with. This type of felt has a few names but more commonly under tilers or under slaters felt, under sarking felt or 1F. Here you can see I've put the old felt as a template on top of the new roll so I can simply cut around it by about 25mm at the sides and about 75mm at the bottom. This is the top side of the felt. Notice it's smoother and better finished than the rear of the felt where if you look closely you will be able to see the hessian reinforcing clearly visible. Pin the felt into position with galvanized clout nails. Here I've used 25mm large head to grip the felt. Nail one side first then gently stretch out any sags before final fixing. Now measure the gap for your lath and use matching timber where possible. It will be either slating tiling or more commonly these days one of the larger profile tiling laths. Over the years specifications change so what may once have been tiling lath could easily now be classed as slating lath but the most important thing is the lath height. The new lath must be the same height as the old otherwise you are going to see a hollow or a bump in the tiles when you put them back. Ok so now we're ready to nail the new lath into place with 50mm galvanised nails. A good tip here is to flatten the sharp end off the nail. This will help stop the timber from splitting and weakening. By placing the nail over another available nail with the point in the air, just give it 3 or 4 taps with the hammer. You should now have something that looks like this and it will now punch through the timber without splitting it. And here is the proof, even in old dry timber. Now everything's looking as it should, the tiles can go back on. Just place them back making sure they're seated properly. 
I find the flat pry bar is the best tool for pulling down the tiles as it provides plenty of leverage and any final adjustment of the gaps is easier. Well, once again that brings another project to an end. I hope this video has helped in some way and thanks for watching.